This podcast is brought to you by Ceridian. In human resources, you have to be compliance people, but you get into the business because you are people people. You have to comply with labor laws for different employee types, locations, and situations, and the rules keep changing. Is there a system that can help you simplify compliance so that you can focus on people? Yes, there is. Ceridian's human capital management software helps you stay ahead of compliance challenges. Visit ceridian.com slash HR to learn more. Ceridian intelligence at work. The challenge, and this is something that, you know, is dear to my heart also as a marketer, is making that work visible. And this is something, you know, we can forget even HR and marketing for the moment. For every employee, there's the work that you do, which is super important, but there's also how do you promote that work? If no one knows about it, how are you going to, you know, get the attention and visibility that you need to, to make certain things happen in your own career? And I think this is, there's this fundamental question that you can ask either at the function level or at the individual level, how do we make our, our work more visible and prominent so that we get the support, so that we get the appreciation and that we're ultimately more successful at what we're trying to do. Laura is an HR technology advisor who has led product strategy and marketing teams for PeopleSoft, Workday, and Oracle. In 2018, she co-founded Red Rocks, an investment firm dedicated to creating positive social and environmental impact. She's currently the head of brand and communications at Personio. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Hacking HR podcast. You know, one of my favorite topics, and, and I don't know if this is because I am outgoing and extroverted, one of my favorite topics in the HR space is the relationship between marketing and HR. I, I myself believe that not only marketing is in the front lines between an organization and their external customers, but HR is as well, because we are dealing with candidates and, you know, our name, our, the employer branding is out there because of the people who work with us that we are serving in HR. So there is a very intimate relationship between marketing and HR. So I'm very excited to welcome Laura to talk about these topics. Laura, how are you? I'm good, Enrique. Happy to be here. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And you can tell how excited about I am about this topic. And, and you, you know, for, for these reasons that I just mentioned, but at the same time, we, we've seen, you know, throughout history, the HR function has been not only back office from the, from the, from the function perspective, but back office from the, from the exposure perspective too. It is like, you know, where is the HR? It's somewhere sitting in a desk in an office back there and nobody knows about them, right? And I think the HR function is and can be so important facing out to the external client, to the, uh, to the, uh, the, the, the customers of an organization. So what do you think about that? What is, the, what is the relationship between marketing and HR? First of all, I want to make a quick plug for the back office function, because I think if employees think about it, you know, they're very grateful that they get paid on time, that certain things in the business just work smoothly. So all of this back office stuff, it's super important. And I would even argue that it's super strategic to the business. So absolutely that work is so important. The challenge, and this is something that, you know, is endeared to my heart also as a marketer is making that work visible. And this is something, you know, we can forget even HR and marketing for the moment. For every employee, there's the work that you do, which is super important, but there's also how do you promote that work? If no one knows about it, how are you going to, you know, get the attention and visibility that you need to, to make certain things happen in your own career? And I think this is, there's this fundamental question that you can ask either at the function level or at the individual level, how do we make our, our work more visible and prominent so that we get the support, so that we get the appreciation and that we're ultimately more successful at what we're trying to do. Case in point, employer branding and recruiting. So if, if you are a recruiter, you are a marketer, right? You have a job to sell. That's your product and your company is your product. And you need to ask yourself, who's my ideal customer? <laughs> and not just why do you want that customer, but why should they want you? Yeah. What, you know, and there's sort of the generic corporate culture and branding that you do, but then there might also be, you know, if you're, if you're a good marketer, a really good marketer, there might also be some tailoring that goes on for a specific role or a specific part of the business where you really go deep into that persona 
<laughs> and you ask, what is it that motivates them? What's the hook that's going to make them realize that my product is the right one for them? And I think this intersection between HR and marketing is really interesting. Absolutely. And I, and I can tell that you are a marketer in HR because of the <laughs> words that you use. I, I, <laughs> the words that you use are, are the evidence of, of, your, of your marketing background. You know, I, I talk, and, and you, you probably have heard this too, I talk to so many people in HR, and there, there's always this thing, this idea that comes up, which is, I'm not a salesperson, you know, I mean, I'm not a salesperson, so I don't like doing sales, blah, blah, blah. And what I tell these people that I talk to is, you are a salesperson, because if you can't transform a, a business goal into an HR strategy, but also selling how that strategy will benefit the organization, you will never get the support. You will not get the money, the resources, the time, whatever you need to make it happen. So you got to be able, like you're saying, to sell this idea to, it doesn't have to be sold to external customers. It has to be sold to your leaders for them to give you the money you need to make it happen. So having said that, what I think it's that people in HR fear what, what sales is about because they are like, this is a mysterious thing and, and I don't know what that's about. So if you can tell, uh, Laura, maybe two or three things that you think are critical skills that salespeople have that we can utilize in the HR space, what, what would those skills be? Yeah, absolutely. So actually, I think uh, you know, a lot of marketers would also say, I'm not a salesperson. Um, I don't know if this is, you know, all marketers are not standing on a stage yeah. in front of thousands of people. In fact, very few of them are. There is a great deal of back office marketing work yeah. that happens. So first and foremost, marketing, you know, is, is a back office function that has done a good job selling itself to the organization, you know, some companies better and some companies not so well <laughs> because of a, a couple of key things. First of all, marketing measures everything that happens, right? So, so measuring success is and, and automating processes to get the scale. So this whole digitalization topic is very important. Now, HR also digitalizes, but then you have to look at that solution and make sure, are we first of all getting the productivity we need from the automation, but then are we getting the KPIs, the analytics, the data and information and intelligence we need to go and drive business strategy? And then of course, how good are we at interpreting it? And I've seen this in HR as well. So I've seen very outbound facing HR teams where the leader of HR is a very visible individual. So it comes down also to individual communication skills, storytelling skills, turning the data into a narrative that excites other people. So I don't know if marketing always has an exciting narrative, but at least it's very, <laughs> I, I hope we do, but it, it's very cut and dried if marketing is working or not. It's, it's, it's binary. It's yes or it's, or it's no. <laughs> Yeah. So getting to that level of digital maturity is also super important. So those are a couple of things that I, I think really make the difference. The, you know, the digital footprint of marketing, the data, and also the, the communication skill, the storytelling. Storytelling is such an important part of what we do in marketing, and it really needs to be in HR as well, because your company has a story, your people have a story, your perspective buyers and your prospective employees, they all have a story and this is what builds your culture and brings it to life. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and you know what? You're talking about two things, uh, storytelling and di basically data analytics, right? Leveraging on, 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 on your KPIs, measuring them to make sure that what you're doing makes sense. And, and to me, they, they together with lessons learned from other areas, sales, operations, engineering, whatever it is, finances, they, if we in HR had the ability, I, I don't know why we don't do it or we, why we haven't done it. If we start looking at all these other functions and saying, what has marketing learned in the past 20 years, in the past 30 years that we can bring to HR? All right, it's storytelling and it's leveraging on KPIs. What has engineering learned? You know, maybe some experimentation. Finances, maybe, you know, the, the, the nitty gritty detail, attention to detail in the financial, finan financials of the company. So bringing all those things back to HR 
could help us create a better picture of the work that we should be doing and how to talk to these internal customers. Because at the end of the day, you guys in marketing are customers of HR, same with finances and same with operations and engineering. So I think it's just so valuable that uh, you bring up these two skills because they are skills that we truly need in HR, data analytics and storytelling. Yeah, well, well put. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and, and I would add one more thing, and I think this is true for both marketing and HR, and it's really something that any part of the business can, can improve at, but particularly for HR, you know, if HR wants to be a partner to the business, the thing that I think really is, is where the rubber hits the road is operational excellence. Mm. It is very hard, you know, for two reasons. One, so that there, you know, there's the time, there's the capacity to think strategically, to look at the data and think about critically what it means and you know what to do next and how to turn that into a narrative or a business strategy so you need the time to do that and digitalization can help with that and the other thing is just for credibility in the business it's very hard and this is true for marketing as well and not just for hr but it's hard to be taken seriously as some as a business partner or an expert if your operations are not running on rails yeah. So, you know, just to give you an example, if, you know, if someone's not getting the support they need for recruiting or, or organizational development or the things that they need on the front line of the business where, you know, where the money's made, but, you know, it's very hard to make a case for yourself as a, as a partner to the business. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so I'd say I would add operational excellence to, to the list. Yeah. One thing that I'm hearing here is the, the, the need for HR to understand the cycle that is going on or the cycles that are happening inside the company, not just its own, not, not just its own HR silo, but understanding what marketing, how the cycle works in marketing, how the cycle works in many other functions to then be able to translate their needs into HR practices when, once you understand those cycles and not trying to either make assumptions or, uh, uh, you know, or think that you actually have the answers about the way other functions operate. Yeah, it sounds like we're moving into design thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and you know uh, we we are close to wrapping up the conversation, but okay. um, at the very beginning of our chat, you used words that are definitely marketing, but also design thinking words. You know, describing the persona, uh, you know, the hook of a of a product or a service. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just to wrap up our conversation, I, I want to ask you design thinking, marketing, HR, are they part of this same family? Are they far away cousins? What, what's, what's going on here between these three things? <laughs> between the three things, wow. Well, design thinking is a, is a framework, I think, for reframing your assumptions mm -hmm. and inclusively designing something uh, new or better. To take it into an HR context, you know, it's one thing to do an engagement survey, take the data, go away, try and fix a process, come back with the new process. That's not design thinking, however. Yeah. Design thinking would be far more, first of all, far more inclusive. So you would design that process in conjunction with, with employees. You would also very specifically frame the problem you're trying to solve. Let's say you're, you're focused on performance management, you know, first and foremost, what do you want your performance management to achieve? Is it meant to be something that's very employee centric, that's going to help people take charge of their own careers and develop themselves? Or is it going to be more you know, company HR centric where we're trying to standardize or we're trying to have fair processes? Or is it gonna be something in between? You know, If you don't frame the problem you wanna solve, you're not gonna get the right result. And if you don't include your stakeholders in the design, you're also probably not gonna get the level of buy-in that you would hope for. So I think, and I can make a similar case for marketing, you know, if marketing isn't close to sales, if marketing isn't close to the customer, then the same challenges arise. So I think design thinking is something that can be applied to any part of the business to more inclusively design better solutions. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of those, one of those methodologies, but also concepts and, and a, a mindset actually, because design thinking, yes, it's a methodology, but there's a mindset behind it, which is, you know, you're putting yourself in the place, in the shoes of your customer, like for real, not just as in, let me see how you feel, but let me design for you. And it's a completely different, different mindset in there. So Laura, let me ask you this question to, to wrap up our, our chat. From design thinking and or marketing, if you were able to tell HR people 
This is the one thing you have to learn in 2021. If you learn three, fantastic. But if you learn this one throughout 2021, boy, you made a great work. What would that one thing be? I'm oversimplifying here, but I, I like to get people to the very like tangible stuff. I would say personalization would be a real opportunity area for HR. OC Tanner did this beautiful piece of research that peak moments stay with us longer than moments of frustration. People expect a certain amount of of, uh, friction at work. You know, we get paid. We don't expect everything to be perfect. And in HR, of course, we're trying to standardize. We're trying to eliminate problems. We're right. We're trying to smooth everything over. That may be a flawed assumption. Because if we can get more engagement by creating a peak moment, you know, rather than trying to fix every step of the process, figuring out for different employee groups or individuals even, what are, you know, yes, this doesn't work so well, but you don't care that much about it. So we're not going to spend time on it. We're going to get to the things you really care about, and we're going to make those things awesome. And it may not be the same for every employee. So we're going to also, you know, involve some personalization and choice for you. So, you know, we're going to have a very flexible approach, not so standardized. I think that is a great opportunity area for HR to investigate. And I think design thinking is also an excellent methodology to start to start looking at it. Absolutely. I, I love that. And it makes me think about letting go the need of control you know, down to every single piece that is going on in the organization and really focus on where the true value is is waiting to be delivered. So Laura, thank you so much for spending this time with me. Great conversation. Very welcome. My pleasure. Thanks thank so you. Much. Thank you, everybody. Stay tuned for the next episode of the Hacking Nature Podcast. See you all soon. Thank you, everybody, for watching or listening to this podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please follow us on our social media and subscribe to our newsletter so that you can stay informed of all the things that we're putting together for you from the Hacking HR community. Thank you so much. Please continue to stay safe, stay well, stay strong, and we will see you soon.